Good morning, everyone. It's Joker, and today we are here to test out the new Gobta. I did it on stream. That's a little long. I don't really want to make you guys watch all that. So, we're here for a bit shorter of a video. Not entirely sure how long it's going to be, but we're going to showcase him, and we're going to put him next to Fire Milam, arguably his best friend. So, if you are unclear of what Gobta does, he is an orb changer, which is fantastic. Double orb changing is always a good thing in my books. It's great that a lot of units have it. That means, you, you know, your team comps can get a little more varied because if your team is going for a certain orb, the more characters that can give you those orbs, the better. He also increases the gauge by 6% on blues, which also is, you know, it's not the biggest increase, but it's better than nothing else, so I have no arguments there. But his other skill, the one that really matters, increases your own crit damage by 19% at level 7. At level 10 it is 25%. It increases your own counter power by 10. That's not as useful, but I mean, you could, in theory, pair him up with the Earth Golem, and drop this, and you know your counters are going to do more damage. If you crit, you're going to do more damage. But he increases his own crit damage, not crit chance, crit damage by 19%. You know who increases your crit chance by a godly amount? Is Fire Millum, because she at level seven increases it by 88%, and at level 100. It is a 100% crit chance increase, and the only reason I haven't done that is because I don't have the materials to get her up to level 100. So we're kind of waiting while I farm the Predator battle and get more of those rainbow things, rainbow circles. So, it will be there, eventually. But, 88% is still very high, very good. I have been shafted, I have, you know, hit that 22% RNG where I don't get the crit, which is really unfortunate. But 88% is a lot. And you give Gobta with his increased crit damage, and you increase his crit chance by 88%, you can do some crazy damage. And we're here to test out how that's going to look. We're going to go in first into a just a very easy predator battle, what I would like to do during all my showcases for you know long damage tests. I want to get enough points to drop Milim's crit boost and Gobta's crit boost and have a whole hand of Gobta. That's the point of the first section of this video. I don't really care about these three. You can orb change, you can orb change your damage, but I, yeah, you're not the point. The point is these two. We have Ifrit, who can boost our fire damage again by 15% and give us alt gauge. So I'm going to shoot for the perfect turn of Gobta, where I have a full hand plus his alt, and then we're going to drop both buffs, and we're going to see how much damage he can actually put out at level 80. His attack stat's not very high. I don't have very good gear for him, I will admit. He's got claws. They're level 60, but they're wind. S sue me. Sorry. I don't I don't have enough box space for all that. Let's move out. <laughs> Let's dive in. That's what I normally say, right? <sighs> Wonder if I should just cut until I get to that hand. I might do that. This video could get long. We'll probably do that. Never mind. Before we do that, we're going to test out his base damage. Just how much he does with two hits. Just to see, you know, how much his power increases per crit and then per boost. So, 2,000. Give or take. That's, yeah, it's under average. His attack stat is quite low because of that crit boost he gives himself. So that's how they, that's how they compensated him by giving him a low base attack stat. So let's come back when our hand kind of looks like this, but not Millum. Okay, we're back. Turn 8, not terribly long. We just kept getting a lot of Millum cards. I think the game knows that I like Millum. But we are here. We have... We're going to drop Ifrit. We're increasing our secret skill gauge by 34% and fire attack by 15. So good base damage boost, because of course we are all fire units. No. We're going to pop Millum's 88% crit rate for all allies, and we're also going to 
pop Gobta's crit damage by 19% and counter power by 10. Oh. I want a Gobta ult, don't I? Well. This will be a good test regardless. Let's find out how much damage this is going to do. 35. Oh, gee, that's really fast. 35. So it went up 1,500 damage. And then there's the crit and the 200% boost for 74. I'd say that's a pretty strong showing right there. Granted, you need a lot of luck to line up that entire turn. But, I mean, that, that was a lot of damage right there. I'm not going to lie to you. That was some great damage. They were all crits. I'm sure if, you know, we gave Benny Maru the whole crit hand, it would look quite a bit better, but... We're only level 80. We're not a level 100. We don't have, you know, good gear like we do for Benny Mario. How much is his ult gonna hit for? I just kinda wanna test this. His fire attack is still boosted. His crit damage is still boosted. Crit chance, not so much, but we can probably, yeah, we can pop that again, actually. So yeah, let's do that. It might not be a full hand, but the ult boost isn't affected by how many cards you have. It's just flat out, so. We're still accomplishing the goal. And this is going to do... His ult actually looks really good. It goes hard. A lot harder than Milim's ult. How much damage is this going to do with the boost still and the crit? 15-2. That's not bad. That crit, right? I'm pretty sure that crit. I'll have to go back and check. I think that crit... Um, okay, so that is a good example of what he can do on a perfect turn with both the Milim and Gobta boosts. We got his alt in there as well on a different hand, but it didn't really matter. Having, actually, having a full hand of six cards of Gobta actually was a, probably the better case. Because all of that was affected, along with the 200% damage boosts. So, I'm not upset with that. Let's move on to a different stage. Okay, we're back. Check the video, it did crit, so the 15-4 was definitely a crit. We are here on the New Year's Milim event, Expert 2. Not Master, because honestly, you gotta get real lucky on Master, and I don't really want to deal with that. This is a showcase, I don't want to showcase us losing the entire time. So we're on Expert 2. Still a difficult event. Not as difficult, though. And I'm sorry if you can hear my loud upstairs neighbors. They have hardwood floors and they love to stomp around. Ah, apartment living. That's great. Anyways, Milim, Benimaru, just that smirk. All right. So we're going to try and shoot for another full hand of Gobta to see how much real world damage we do. Not against an immortal predator battle where I can just sit there and take one damage the entire time. So let's... She nerfs greens, right? Okay, well, let's burn these blues and let's hold on to the Gobta cards. She's going to buff her defense up, which means we have to hold on to the Gobta cards to really get a good feel. Which is unfortunate because, you know, look at our hands that are coming out. So we'll use these. And we'll just try and wait out the attack debuff and her defense boost, which is going to be really hard now. Going one card at a time. Alright, so that seals our attack up. And we're going to use this. We'll get Efreet, so when we're ready... This might hurt someone. Oh, of course she gets Gobta, thank you. Alright, her... Oh, okay. So we're going to drop that as well. We got another Milim card coming, which I'm not really psyched, psyched for. Another Milim card coming. And we're dying very quickly. Okay. After this, a Gobta card's coming. So hopefully he doesn't die. Be really unfortunate. Okay, good. And... Okay, so there... This attack up seal... Um, I mean, this is going to be the best chance we get, though. Our attack isn't lowered, technically. And we're boosting our crit, not our attack stats. So maybe the Ifrit 
boost won't come into effect, but we can definitely at least... Oh. Yeah, okay, we'll have enough. Yeah, we, we have barely enough. So we're gonna we're gonna drop Ifrit. Fire attack, not his own personal attack. So let's check. Um, I mean, it's not negated, so this must be. It must be very specifically worded. Like if we were to pop um, Space Rimuru's attack boost, I think that would be negated by this. But this fire attack is specific for fire damage, not base attack. So I'm gonna assume that we got this extra boost here. And now we're going to buff the crit rate and the crit damage. And we're gonna test how much damage this does against Milim on a full six card hand. And we're gonna get a double ult if he doesn't die from, you know, Milim. So let's see how this goes. Or, you can just guard half of it. Critical, pierce, and weak point. Who's dying? Benny Mar is dying. Okay. We should have a Milam and a... Okay. Okay. Okay, yeah. So there we go. So we've got a Milam ult. And a Gob to ult. We don't have enough points to drop another crit boost, though. Um, blue to green to blue, orange to blue, blue to orange. No, I think this will be fine. So we'll launch the ults first, that way we don't die in the process. And I think this will be enough to kill. I think. Don't quote me on it. Take a look at Gobta's ult one more time, without the um, crit boost now. Or the crit rate boost, sorry. And 10,000. Still respectable damage right there. We got that extra 15% boost from Ifrit, so that's good. We'll watch Milim. We'll watch her show you in the world. And she does 12. And that that's just coming from Milim having an extra dupe, so her ult has a higher multiplier, and her just having a higher base attack stat. So overall. I really wish she hadn't guarded, like, three of those hits. That would have been real nice if we could see, you know, true damage. But I guess this is a real-world test, and they're going to guard something. At least she didn't counter me and kill me halfway through. So, that's a plus. Um, Where else can I take them? I guess I could... Let's, let's try this. Let's try to stay. I don't feel like going into Master Conquest. I don't feel like dealing with the stuns, even though we have Shizu. We'll just take them into Stage 60 of Crucible, and that'll be the final segment of this video. And yeah, we'll run it like this. I like this pairing. I think this pairing works better than the Wind Meta pairing of, you know, everyone increasing the green soul gauge by 5%, because as you saw in my video, that that damage increase is not overly substantial over the amount of turns it takes to actually get to a point where it matters. So I think the immediate crit power boost is much better and much more relevant than trying to wait out a long fight, because there is no true long event fight right now in this game. It doesn't exist. You either beat things in seven to nine turns, or you're limited to, to six in some events, like this one and the Orc uh, of Disaster Conquest stage. And then you're hard limited. Very rarely do turns go past, I would say, 12, unless you're really trying to beat some Master Conquest stage like Charybdis or the Sky Dragon. But at that point, most of your units are hurt really badly, or just straight up dead. So, not a lot of opportunity to go into a long event fight and stack those buffs meaningfully. So I think the crit damage boost up front is a lot better. All you're really, you know, uh, walled behind is your total amount of skill points. Um, 
I want to save these oranges? I think I will. Okay, that was a fair call. She can change that green to blue. Do I want to do that, though? I don't really know if I want to do that, so I'm just going to launch these oranges. Okay, yeah, the point I was making is that out of the three metas that we've had, I still like the dark meta the most. Because alt rushing and just unleashing three super attacks in one turn is fantastic. It's great damage. So, I like the dark team. I like the units on the dark team. I think it, it's a very cohesive team. Even if you throw, you know, a couple fire units in there, like, you know, Benny, Benny Maru, he boosts his own damage along with, you know, getting alts all the time. Changing greens to oranges. You have Beretta who does that. Dragon Milum changes oranges to blues in case you need the protection gauge. I think that works very well with all those units. Not a big fan of the wind meta. The fire meta, though, is turning out to be interesting. It's the crit meta. So it is something new. You know, alt rush, uh, alt rush, stacking attack, criticals. So I'm excited to see what February's meta is going to be and how that's going to bring about some changes to the game. But let's go ahead and use some blues right here and then we'll get Ifrit. We're doing decent damage. Oh, well, not there, but... And how long... Okay, so these greens are done now. And Shuna... Shuna changes... What does she change? Can I click on her? No, I can't. I think she changes greens to blues. So I think we'll hold off on using the greens for now. Unless it's a terrible mistake and I'm about to nerf them. So let's drop the oranges, and we'll get Benny Maru's ult. Okay, so that, yeah, that, that happened. And... Let's do... Okay, I wanna, I wanna look it up. What is, uh... Nope. Where is my spreadsheet thing? Battle characters. Fire Shuna. Where are you? That's not the right one. Is she even on here? Hold on. Wait, is Gopta on here? No, they haven't updated the spreadsheet. Alright, well. That's unfortunate. Alright. Whatever. We will just assume. So we're going to pop Ifrit. We're going to get everyone's alt gauge on this hand right here. And then we're going to swap out... Gobta. No. We're going to swap out... Benny Maru, since he already has his alt. And we're gonna pop... Okay, greens to blues. Excellent. Excellent! Yes, perfect. Alright, so we're not able to get Gobtus alt, but we are able to get Milam's alt. And that should give us enough points to do what I want to do next turn. Okay, counter, thank you. Oh, and Milam's almost dead. Don't do it again. Okay, please hit Shuna, hit Shuna, hit Shuna, hit Shuna. Oh, okay, well that didn't hurt. All right, so here we're gonna bring Benny Mario back over Shuna. And we're gonna pop, we have no Gopta cards. <laughs> okay, whatever. We're gonna pop the crit rate and we're gonna pop Benny Mario's own attack boost. 
so it won't, it'll, it'll make these cards hurt a little bit more, not by much, but they'll hurt, and then we'll have the alts on hand. So let's send it. Unfortunate that we couldn't use Gopta right here, but the hand is what we got, so we just have to work with it. I'm not quite sure if we'll kill here. If we crit both times, maybe? Uh, 16-6? Well, we might, actually. I think Benny Mario would do about the same, since he's maxed out. Uh, 18-4, eight, oh, even more. Okay, so... I'm gonna call the showcase there. Very good team comp. Because, you know, we have Benny Mario as the DPS. Yes, he's maxed out. But Milim gave him that crit. Milim gave herself and Benny Mario that crit. And that did a lot of damage for an AoE. 18,000 damage on an AoE? Because you have an 88% chance to crit, which is crazy. Gopta, we didn't get to use on this fight like, well, like we wanted to in the showcase. We weren't able to show off how much damage he could do with a full hand and his crit boost, but we saw that in the previous fight, where he put up respectable numbers. So I'm not upset, and I'm not unimpressed with his output. Um, do I think he's a must summon? No. No, I don't. If you try and pull for him alone, his, his low attack stat will not bring much to your team. And without getting Fire Milim's critical rate boost, he's kind of a dead unit except for his orb changing, which is great, but there are other units who can orb change and whose other skill would be more useful to the team itself than Gobta's own personal buff if you can't boost his crit rate. So I would suggest for if you want to pull for the Fire meta, I would continue to summon on the Rimuru and Milim banner, because Milim is a fantastic unit. Her ult's not impressive uh, animation-wise, but her skill that she brings to the team can go everywhere. She's not limited. You can boost anyone's crit rate in this game. If you already have Fire Milim, and your fire team looks pretty good, and you want to pull for Gobta, it's not, it's not a terrible idea. I'm not sure if you really should, though. But if Gobta is your main man, then by all means, have at it. I'm not going to stop you. That they're your crystals, after all. You grinded them, you paid for them, you did whatever to get them. Spend them how you will. Just my suggestion. If you don't have Milim, don't summon for Gopta. If you have Milim and you like Gopta, go ahead and summon for him. If you have Milim and don't like Gopta, wait. His banner's up for the rest of the month, and it's only the 8th. We have plenty of time. We have four more weeks for them to drop more fire banners, which God knows they will. Maybe the next fire unit will be better. Maybe the next fire unit will do so much more than what Gobta does. We'll just have to wait and see. But that's it from me, guys. Let me know if you liked the video in the comments. Like the video, subscribe, do all that jazz. But for now, take it easy, and I'll see you later.